Hi, I'm Michael Matika with Philosophy for the Living. I am on a journey through the spirit worlds. Dante is my guide. I am taking a shamanistic approach to the divine comedy. The spirit worlds are here. Eternity is now. Today I will come to Cantos 30 and 31, where I will meet the falsifiers. This is the final final leg of the eighth circle of fraud. Today I will move into the ninth circle, the final circle of hell, which is ringed by towering giants. Last time I met with the alchemists. These were the first of the falsifiers. Alchemists are falsifiers in that they make lead seem to be gold. Other types of falsifiers in this pouch within the eighth circle are the falsifiers of identity. Identity theft is in the inferno. And Dante gives some famous examples of people who pretended to be someone else. We also meet falsifiers of currency, forgers. And finally, we meet falsifiers of words, liars. Here, in the deepest part of the eighth circle, only one more circle to go. This is where we meet the liars. What is happening here? What am I to learn from this? In Dante's presentation of the spirit world, a liar is worse than a murderer. I think the first thing this does, and maybe the most important thing that it does, is that it puts me on alert. Me personally. It puts me as a pilgrim on alert. I haven't murdered anyone. And so I may be tempted to believe that I'm basically a good guy. But if lying is worse than murder, my senses are suddenly sharpened. What's going on? This week, I thought of how we take for granted that politicians lie. I'm American. All Americans know that both political parties lie all of the time. I thought about what that communicates when our ruling class lies as a matter of course consistently. What that teaches us common people is that the truth is a weakness to be hidden away while a lie is a tool if not a weapon. He who tells the hugest lie wins. Still, how can lying be this bad, worse than murder? Again, there's only one more circle left in the inferno. We're right at the end here. So this is what I had to sit with this week and really to meditate on this. 
what I came to is that what makes lying so diabolical is how pervasive it can become. It is a kind of rot. It gets in past our defenses. I feel very strongly that I will not become a murderer, but lies don't feel so bad. The problem with this rot is that once it does get inside, it is corrosive. Because whatever other value I may claim to cherish and to stand for, if I am a liar, I'll lie about anything. And let's be honest, for once, everybody lies sometimes, especially when it is convenient. You hear someone talking about virtue and their values. My question is, what are they selling? Lying is diabolically corrosive. Like water can wear away stone, so lying can wear away any other virtue. Thus is Satan called the Prince of Lies. Now, obviously, I have no influence on the ruling class. And the ruling class has a tremendous influence on us commoners. I cannot hope to uproot what has become an established culture of dishonesty. We see, we hear lies from our televisions, from our leaders. We are surrounded by lies in our workplaces, small little lies that people protect themselves with. We take it for granted. I cannot hope to uproot that culture. But eternity is now. The spirit worlds are here. To tell the truth is to live in truth. And that is a far greater reward than the ruling class could ever bestow on a commoner like me. I now pass into the ninth and final circle of hell. From a great distance, through mists and fog, Dante the Pilgrim sees what he thinks are great towers. Virgil clarifies that those towers are in fact giants bound in chains. Some of these giants are biblical figures, some are from Greek myth. This is strong medicine for the imagination. Giants occupy a, they occupy and they engage a strange imaginal realm. They are always distant and dangerous and uncanny. They are closer to us than the gods are. And yet they are less, and yet they are further away from us. They are uncanny. Here, they are set as posts, 
towering above the ninth circle. This is alive. Now here I want to read a passage from the Bible, from the book of Genesis, about these strange beings that has always fascinated me. This passage is electrifying. From, from Genesis, Genesis 6, 1 and 2. When men began to multiply on the surface of the ground and daughters were born to them, God's sons saw that men's daughters were beautiful and they took any that they wanted for themselves as wives. I was raised Catholic. We were taught that God had only one son. Who are these other sons of God? And when they discover that human women are beautiful, they decide to take them as wives? When men began to multiply on the surface of the ground and daughters were born to them, God's sons saw that men's daughters were beautiful and they took any that they wanted for themselves as wives. I love ancient literature for its ability to condense an entire cinematic universe into one sentence. But it goes on. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. Nephilim has been translated into English as giants. If you read the King James Version, here it will read, the Nephilim were in the earth. And that's not wrong, but it is misleading in how normal it sounds. And so most modern translations will simply leave the original word, word Nephilim. It won't be translated because these beings are so strange that there is no word for them. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when God's sons came in to men's daughters and had children with them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Are the Nephilim the sons of God? Or are they, are the Nephilim the race that was produced when the sons of God impregnated the daughters of men? I don't know. But here they are, here I meet them, standing like gigantic towers over the ninth circle. One of these giants lowers Dante and Virgil down into the ninth and final circle of hell. Next time I will come to the ninth circle proper where I will meet the traitors and the varieties of treachery. If you got something from this video, please like it. Consider subscribing to the channel. Fare forward, farewell, and take care.